10-4, solving radical equations. This time we're going to have variables and other things inside of the uh, inside of the radical. So to start out with, a radical equation is an equation that contains radicals with variables in the radicand. So again, underneath that parentheses, I'm sorry, underneath the radical symbol, we have variables. So when you solve these pretty much like we do with uh, multi-step equations, like here, obviously you're going to subtract off the 7 first. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and square the x squared, right, which makes just x, uh, and then uh, find out the answer here is 81. Something I do want to tell you, too, is always check on these. Because sometimes I'm going to show you later here, you're going to get answers that make no sense. So um, even though they look like they make sense because your work was sound, so always check it. Here we have extraneous solutions. An apparent solution that does not satisfy the original equation. All solutions must be checked. So, ones like these. Again, obviously, big square root over here, right? So square both sides. That gets rid of the, ra the radical symbol. n squared equals n plus 12. Move it around. We know how to solve these, right? n squared minus n minus 12 equals 0. Looking for those zeros, right? Factor the thing. And we look like we get 4 and negative 3 both as answers. That looks good, right? Your work looks sound. Plug those in. You plug in 4. 4 plus 12, right? 16 squared is 16 is 4. That's good. Plug in negative 3. Negative 3 plus 12 right? Negative 9, or 9 rather, square root of 9 is not negative 3. So you must check them for extraneous solutions. Must. So I've included uh, the got it's, the reading, the reading got it's also in the, in the vocab here. So we're just going to keep going. Um, so again, we've seen this example already once uh, in your vocab part of this. So again, x plus, uh, square root of x plus 7 equals 16. Again, subtract out that 7. Square root of x equals 9. Don't tell me it's 3. Don't just go, oh, got it, it's 3. You're not looking for the square root of 9. You're looking for what number has a square root of 9. So square root of both sides. That's the opposite of taking the square root of squaring it. So we can find that we can plug in uh, 81 here. So square root of 81 uh, satisfies this when you do the check. So make sure you do that. So what is the solution of this one here? Uh, x minus 5 equals negative 2. So, again, we're going to start out on that one by adding 5 to both sides. Add 5 to both sides. Square root of x equals 3. And then we want to go back and square both sides. So x then equals, it's a 2, I promise, equals 9. And we're going to go back and check that by plugging that 9 into the original equation. So the square root of 9 minus 5 equals negative 2. Square root of 9 is 3 minus 5 equals negative 2, and that's true. Negative 2 does indeed equal negative 2. So my answer of 9 was absolutely correct. Just like anything, we can have story problems. I know you love that, right? Clocks. Woo. The time t in seconds it takes for a pendulum of a clock to complete a full swing is approximate, approximated by the equation t, that's time, equals 2 times the square root of l over 3.3. L is the length of the pendulum in feet in this case. If the pendulum of a clock completes a full swing in three seconds, what is the length of the pendulum rounded to the nearest tenth of a foot? So, we know the time is t, right? It's three. We were told that right up here, three seconds. Equals two times the square root of L over 3.3. .3. Obviously, we're going to start by dividing off that square root of two, or sorry, dividing off the two, rather. 1.5 is the square root of L over 3.3. .3. Square both sides to undo the square root. 2.25 equals L over 3.3. Multiply off that 3.3. And L is 7.425. Now check that. Plug that back in. 7.425 divided by 3.3. 2.25. Uh, and take, again, take the square root of that times 2. Have to use your calculator, right? Um, is indeed 3. So, there you go. The pendulum is about 7.4 feet long, then we find out. Again, no approximating here. Okay, pretty similar problem here. Uh, this time we're going to say it's going to take one second uh, for the swing. So that's 1 equals 2 times L over 3.3, the square root of that, rather, right? 
So uh, go ahead and divide off the 2. So we're going to get 0.5 equals the square root of L over 3.3. Square root of both sides, uh, so this is 0.25, or square of both sides, equals L over 3.3. Multiply off that 3.3, and I get 0.825 equals L. And that's feet, by the way, 0.825 feet. Now the check on that. So we're going to plug that back in, 1 equals 2 times the square root of 0.825 over 3.3. So that's going to yield on the inside um, 1, we well can divide off that 2 if you like to, so 1 half uh, equals the square root of 0.825 divided by 3.3, and we know that uh, 0.825 divided by 3.3 uh, is 0.25, so 1 half equals the square root of 0.25. And so obviously, again, we can square both sides, right? So we end up uh, with 0.25 equals 0.25. So that means my answer, 0.825 feet, was correct. Now, this next part shouldn't really seem unfamiliar to you. Uh, it says solving with a radical expression on both sides. What is the solution here? So we have 5 uh, t minus 11 under the radical sign equals t plus 5 under the radical sign. So getting rid of that square root, we're going to have just square both sides, right? So 5 t minus 11 equals t plus 5. Well, now we can move some stuff around, right? Because it cleared up the whole radical thing. Go ahead and sub, uh, let's see, go ahead and subtract t from both sides. And then add 11 to both sides. So 4 t equals 16. t is indeed 4. And again, you do need to run the check on the original equation, plugging that 4 back in for t on both sides, and uh, proving that it is indeed true. Okay, so similarly, we're going to take this, uh, and we're just going to start out really by squaring both sides, right? So we get 7x minus, that's not a 7, there we go, try that again. We get 7x minus 4 equals 5x plus 10. So, uh, we're going to subtract 4 uh, from both sides, and we're going to subtract 5x from both sides. So over here, I'm going to get 2x equals 14. That's a 14, I promise. Divide off the 2, and x equals 7. And we're going to go back and prove that, plugging that into the original equation. So we're going to get, under this square root, so we're going to get 7 times 7 minus 4. On this side, we're going to get 5 times 7 plus 10. So here I get the square root of 45 equals the square root of 45. And that's obviously true, right? Square root of 45 equals the square root of 45. Uh, so our answer of 7 was correct. Now I did promise you extraneous solutions, right? Extraneous solutions. n equals n plus 12 under the radical sign here. So square both sides. We have n squared equals n plus 12. Move it on over. N, minus, n squared minus n minus 12 equals 0. And again, we know how to factor that. So, again, we end up with uh, n is 4 and n is negative 3. Now, had we not started with the square roots, we'd be good. That'd be a great answer. But when you plug those back in, plug in that, plug in that 4 over here, um, and we find that, yeah, that, that works. Plug in the 3, and we try to say negative 3 equals 3. I'm sorry, plug in the negative 3 over there. Try to say negative 3 equals 3, and that doesn't work. So, um, the only valid solution is uh, n equals 4. The other is, a, is a, an extraneous solution, and it's not valid. Okay, so over here, uh, we have uh, this. So we're going to square both sides. So the opposite of y squared equals the square root of y plus 6 squared. So we get y, because, you know, negative times negative, that goes away, uh, equals y plus 6. And this is squared, by the way. So subtract the y, subtract the 6, so we get y squared minus y minus 6 equals 0. Factor that one pretty easily, right? y and y and uh, plus 2 and minus 3, again, still equals 0. So y is going to be negative 2, and we think y might equal 3. Now, I'm going to show you here, that's not going to be the case. The negative 2 one, or the negative 2 is going to work great. Because I have negative of negative 2, right? So the opposite of negative 2 equals the square root of negative 2 plus 6. So 2 equals the square root of 4. 
and 2 does indeed equal 2, so this one works. The other one, however, uh, we're going to plug in, so we've got negative 3, right, because the opposite of 3 is negative 3, equals the square root of 3 plus 6, so negative 3 equals the square root of 9, and negative 3 equals positive 3, not true, so the other solution is extraneous, so the only one that works is negative 2. And again, do check the answers. I'm going to count the whole thing wrong if you don't, um, and uh, you try to give me some extraneous solutions. Now I'm going to make it even more fun. Identifying equations with no solutions. What is the solution of this? So we start out by subtracting the 8 from both sides. So uh, the square root of 3y equals negative 6. Square both sides, so 3y equals 36. y equals 12. Sounds good, right? Check your work. Plug that 12 back in. So on the inside here, we end up with uh, 36 plus 8 equals 2. Square root of 36, so that's 6 plus 8, that's 14, does not equal 2. So nothing works for this. No solution. And don't just tell me no solution. You better check it and show that to me. And double check for math errors when you get this no solution idea. Because uh, sometimes it comes back to get you. Okay, so now, uh, and I'm going to admit to you, I was working on this one, and I messed it up twice. I know the answer was, and I'll show you where, how I know where the answer is and doesn't, isn't going to work um, as I'm going through. So, um, so we're going to start out here. Um, and... Uh, We'll start off, we're going to solve for that x, so let's subtract that 6 from both sides. So minus 6, minus 6. So don't lose the negative here. Uh, negative square root of 2x equals 4. Looking good, right? Divide off that negative 1, and square root of 2x equals negative 4. Now I'm going to pause you right here. Take a look. I don't want you to pause. Look at this. A square root has to come up positive. It can't be negative because we're not working with um, imaginary numbers yet. So, no. Right here you can go, oh, yeah. I don't care what's inside of here. It can't come out and be a negative number. It doesn't matter. But let's say you didn't catch that. So you keep going and you square both sides. So you 2x equals uh, 16, right, because you square both sides. And x then equals 8, right, divided off the 2. Sounds good. Let's plug that in. So we're going to start off with um, 6 minus 2, or square root of other 2 times 8, equals 10. Well, this is obviously 16, so 6 minus 4, square root of 16 is 4, equals 10. Uh-oh, uh here we go. 2 does not equal 10, so my answer is absolutely an extraneous solution. And since the only one I've got, um, there is no solution here. That's it, done. But again, I knew that clear back here because I could see that um, this is a square root and it has to come out to be a positive number. can't come out to be negative, so I knew clear back here there was no solution. But I just kept messing up when I was trying to do it on my own. Hopefully you don't make me work this one on the board because I'll just keep messing it up. But alrighty, there you go. Uh, homework over this one. And uh, ask questions in class. Oh, wait, sorry, I almost forgot C here. Uh, or B, rather. How can you determine that the equation, square root of x, equals negative 5, uh, does not have a solution without going through all the steps? Well, again, based on that idea I mentioned earlier, the principal root of a, of a number, a principal's root of a number cannot be negative. In other words, nothing I can put in here unless I use the magic number i uh, can come out to be correct. That's it. That's the whole point.